Hello. Here on our hilltop in North Wales, looking out over Snowdonia, the Midlands team have come to play the North of England in the last of our first round clashes before we start the return fixtures next week. It's Stephen Maddock and Rosalind Miles for the Midlands against Stuart McConey and Adele Geras for the North. They're about to have their questions for today handed out to them on sheets of paper to give them a fighting chance of keeping these notoriously complex questions in their heads as they try to break them open. You can also see the questions transcribed. They're available on our website under today's date. To give the teams 30 seconds thinking time, I'll just deal with the cliffhanger question I gave you at the end of the programme last time. I asked then why Andrea of Seven, before a sporting fixture with a level score and a billet shared with Tommy could leave you in pieces. Well, if you googled Andreev, and my guess is that you probably had to, uh, you might have found that he was a now rather obscure Russian novelist who wrote a story in 1908 called The Seven Who Were Hanged. A sporting fixture with a level score would be drawn, and being billeted with Tommy would mean you were quartered. So we have hanged, drawn and quartered, the common sentence for treason, until as late as Victorian times. Um, Well done if you got that. No googling for our teams here, they're on their own. And Rosalind and Stephen, uh, you're going to start us off today. Take us from nomadic tribes of Eurasia to a Japanese tipple, then to the inventor of the Schwartz Metaclume method, then to an Afro-French football hero currently playing for Crystal Palace, and finally to a city in the Tokyo commuter belt. Take us from nomadic tribes of Eurasia to a Japanese tipple, then to the inventor of the Schwartz Metaclume method, then to an Afro-French football hero currently playing for Crystal Palace, and finally to a city in the Tokyo commuter belt. Well, as we wend our way through this forest of obfuscation, longing for a drink, we seize on the Japanese tipple, and we think that's sake. That is sake, yeah. Um... I really ought to know the football aspect to this, but I was um, thinking that might be yeah, where you went next. In. And if you go there, I think you will crack this we'll question. Crack this. So, an Afro-French football hero currently playing for Crystal Palace. Uh, I, I would have immediately gone signed to... from Wolves in 2015. Does that help you at all? From Wolves. Oh gosh. Think the only football... they all move around so much. This is the problem. So my my that's my top excuse. guest was going to be Yannick <laughs> Balassi, but Crystal Palace have just sold him to Everton. Um, what about the Sch- Schwartz Metaclume method? That doesn't ring a bell at all. Is that like the thing they use for calculating cricket when uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's Twilight That's Duckworth Lewis. <laughs> no, it's, it's not the Duckworth Lewis. <laughs> it's not a method of um, of birth control. No, it no. Isn't. Okay, uh, it's a method of it's a method of teaching history. Oh, okay. I, I should reveal to you probably that it's a fictional ah, a fictional, a fictional method, method. In, in, so the inventor of it therefore is the writer who came up with it is that, and that's is... not sake yes is it yes. okay yes. so because we have sake and sake so yeah. okay so so we're looking we're changing a letter as we go along so there's a Mon- there's a there's a eurasian tribe called the Saka. There is indeed. Uh, yes. There's, there's. And then, did you actually know that, or did you just work uh, it out uh, by process retrieved of Retrieved from the deep, <laughs> mm, distant memory. <laughs> um, so the so the footballer there for Sacco. Very good. Um, I think he's he's from from Senegal. I think. Um, actually, what Mali. Mali. Okay. And the Bakary Sacco. Bakary, Bakary Sacco. The yeah, city okay. in the Tokyo and then that is must Saku. be Sacco. Sacco. It is indeed. As in Sakura. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You've got all five England. Um, can you better that? And your first question today is the work of a listener, Andrew Russell in Cheadlehoom. Which sporting trio could lead you from an inaugural event in Kennington to either a popular sitcom from the 70s and 80s or the Liverpool waterfront? Which sporting trio could lead you from an inaugural event in Kennington to either a popular sitcom from the 70s and 80s or the Liverpool waterfront? Well... The Liverpool waterfront, its crowning glory is the three buildings called the Three Graces, which I think is the Pearl Assurance Building, the Cunard Building, and another one that... The Liver Building? No. The Liver Building, of the course. Royal Liver Building, the Cunard Building, and the Port of Liverpool. The Port of Liverpool Authority. Yeah. Okay. So they're called the Three Graces. 
So if if, we, if grace is the word that we're looking for there, the popular sitcom of the 70s and 80s could be Are You Being Served, which takes place in the Grace Brothers department store. Indeed it is. So are we looking at graces? Gra- it, and if we are, is WG one of them? He is. So is this his first innings at Kennington or his, his debut or his first test match or something along those lines? Is it, well, it's, it's a different... Uh, I mean, it's a broader inaugural event in Kennington. So it was the first test match? The first test first match. First test match. Yeah. OK. So we've so got... With three, we have Grace, WG, Grace, Grace Brothers and the three Graces. You've, you've got everything. Right. It's a six. Uh, I, I could have been extremely pernickety and, and asked you to point out that all three Grace brothers played in the first Test match, right. but I think... I think took that as a given. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> that, was under, that. that was understood. That so, uh, okay. well done to you, North of England. Six points. So, Midlands. Uh, Stephen and Rosalind, it's time for a music question, and this one has been suggested by Andrew Phillip. Listen to these four pieces and then explain in what comedic sense might one of the first three be responsible for the last. We walked in the cold air. So, Stephen and Rosalind, uh, can you tell us in what comedic sense might one of the first three be responsible for the last? So the first piece of music was the verse before the the, the, the good bit of the song Vienna by Ultravox. Yes, that's right. And I think, any, as any schoolgirl know, the Land of Hope and Glory piece. Uh, Which is our girl's pomp, proper, its proper Sunday name is Pomp and Circumstance March Number 1. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, the, the third piece of music also was, was uh, more obviously comic than the other two, certainly more comic than Vienna, uh, which was the Overture to the Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. Absolutely right, yep. Um, and, and the last piece was, was a waltz by, I guess, Chopin. It is a waltz by Chopin. And you're really going to need to know... Exactly which one. Which one. And the name. So it's, yep. not, it's not the minute waltz. Um, okay. Okay, so it's the the specific name of that wall. It's not a butterfly or something like that. Um, no, the, there are. We're in the natural world, are we? We are in the natural yeah. world. Yeah. Um, okay. There's, um, there's a story about the origin of this waltz that you're going to okay. need to recall. Need to recall. Um, we're looking I, for a comedy, a famous comedy, or just the name of the. Piece? There's a connection with um, well-known comedies and. So Vienna, I assume, is what we need from the first one. Vienna is what you need from the first and, one. And Land of Hope and Glory is what we need from no, the second? No, you need Pomp. the... Comp- no, the composer in the second. Oh, Elgar. Okay, Vienna yep. and Elgar. And then Figaro. And then Figaro, yes. Vienna, Elgar and Figaro. And uh, a famous comedy. Not, not a single comedy. Ah, it's not. It's not a Shakespearean connection. No, no. it's not a Shakespearean no. connection. They're I've, very, I've they're very varied. Through. These comedies, a sitcom, yeah. um, well, sort of two sitcoms and a and a famous cartoon film with a character called Figaro. Fantasia. Yes. Oh, with a character. No, roughly that era, though. Yeah. It's not Dumbo and the, and the same studio. Not Dumbo. No. Or, um, no. Bambi. No. 
Um, so Disney, another Disney of the of the 1940s, the early period. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to have to give I mean, you a no, nudge here from, from, from a famous Italian folk story. A Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Oh, so it's the Cricket Waltz. No, it no. isn't. I can see why you might have gone there, but um, Figaro isn't the name of the cricket. Oh, it's, it's such a long time since I've seen it. Um, I mean, Geppetto is the name of the. And Geppetto of the is the name of Pinocchio's him. creator. Yeah, Pinocchio's but creator. Um, well, Figaro G- must be. Geppetto's such... familiar, you might say. Yes. His cat. Yeah. His cat. So it's a cat waltz. So is this is this Chopin's cat? leapt up onto his knee while he was composing. No, leapt onto the keyboard. Hence the, the... OK, so the opening of it is a rather sort of um, the same notes over and over and over again. That's, notion, where he's sat, that, that's where he's notionally sat how... On um, the keyboard. Yes. I do remember the story. He yes. arrives at, uh, at the opening notes because the cat... Because the cat sat on the keyboard. So, can you do anything more with the first two elements here? So these are both cats from other comedies. They are. Can you identify them? Vienna, a cat. Gosh, it's not, we're not in the Aristocats. No. Elgar is the cat in the um, wonderful ramblings of the failed writer. He's a failed writer, and he keeps um, winging his way from bit to bit. Oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, I shall. My, I know everybody that loves this program. <laughs> they're is all. Jumping they're all shouting because everybody. Everybody who listens to Radio Four will know this. Yeah. Yes. Screams. I'm going to tell you just to cut things yeah. short. It's, Ed Reardon's week. Ed wow. Reardon, yes. Now, what about what about Vienna? Vienna doesn't ring any bells. Vienna, the cat, belonging to a famously melancholy landlord. Oh, um, uh, is it um, rising damp? It is Rigsby's cat. Rigsby's. Yeah. It was cat. called Vienna. It's called right, Vienna. Okay. Yes. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So we played you Ultravox's Vienna, Elgar's Pomp and Circumstance March. The Overture to the Marriage of Figaro, and finally Chopin's Cat Waltz. The first three were all clues to cats in comedies. Vienna is Rigsby's cat, Elgar is Ed Reardon's cat, and Figaro is uh, Geppetto and Pinocchio's cat. Really tough question, but it was like herding cats to get, to get you to the answer, so I'm afraid I can only give you two points, Midlands. So, Stuart and Adele, another listener's suggestion for you. This is from Simon Breed. Why would a literary Russian fool, a Dutchman's vital story and an Italian's cinematic backseat lead you to an explosive lizard? Why would a literary Russian fool, a Dutchman's vital story and an Italian's cinematic backseat lead you to an explosive lizard? The literary Russian fool is probably the idiot. It is, yes. The Dutchman's vital story, if vital as in life, uh, we're thinking maybe the famous biopic of Vincent van Gogh, played by, I think, Kirk Douglas's Lust for Life. Oh, absolutely right, yep. And now... Now, le- the, now the fun starts. Now the fun starts. <laughs> Leaping on, I know, that the, I know that The Idiot and Lust for Life are albums by Iggy Pop. Uh, so the explosive lizard, Iggy Pop, who got his name from the fact that his original band, James Jewel Osterberg is his real name, but he got his name from the fact that his original band were called the Iguanas. That's right. So yep. Iggy Pop will be an explosive lizard. That yep. leads us to think... All we're left with is an Italian the cinematic, cinematic, cinematic vaccine. vaccine. Are we looking for the title of another Iggy Pop album? Uh, and well, a song. A song. Hmm. I was going to say Stuart's... The Passenger. So- Just explain... And can you make the connection to the... The ad- Passenger is... Um, yes, it's a movie by Antonioni. Very good. You yes, got and, to right. and it's one of his um, um, most famous songs. Yeah. I, um, I won't yeah. sing it now. But... <laughs> no. And he also famously said when Anthony Wilson asked him, your album The Idiot, is this because you see yourself in that novel by Dostoevsky? Dostoevsky? He answered, no, it's because I am an idiot. <laughs> Well, um, nothing idiotic about the way you tackled that. I thought that was a tricky question, but um, but you opened it up uh, immediately. Um, why would a l- literary Russian fool, the idiot, a Dutchman's vital story, lust for life, and an Italian's cinematic backseat, The Passenger by Antonioni, lead you to an explosive lizard, Iggy Pop, because all of those are um, the titles of tracks or albums by Iggy Pop. Beautifully done. Six points to you. 
So, uh, Midlands, replace Eric to create the European Organisation for Nuclear Research, Sterner Hirundo, Dr Ellie Sattler and Showboat. Replace Eric to create the European Organisation for Nuclear Research, Sterner Hirundo, Dr Ellie Sattler and Showboat. So the European Organisation for Nuclear Research... um, uh, obviously, that is not the acronym because it's one of those where we let the French have the acronym uh, and you turn all the words back to France. So it's the Centre Européen de Recherche Nucléaire. Conseil, in or fact. Conseil, sorry. I'm not, not going to dock pardon. you any points for that. <laughs> um, or CERN, for short. C E R N. Yeah. And then Eric, we replace with Ern, Ernie, in the Morecambe and Wise duo, Bring Me Sunshine. <laughs> so we've got CERN and we've got Ern. The Sterner Hirundo, we think, is a fern. No, it isn't. I can see why you're thinking that, but you've... Uh, uh, OK, well... You're l- in the wrong... Let's, let's keep going, because... Sh- the... Well, Showboat was definitely written by Jerome Kern. Yes. K-E-R-N. Yep. And Dr Ellie Sattler is probably better known as the actor Laura Dern. Very good, yeah. Who is Dr Ellie Sattler? I think that's in Jurassic Park. Yes. It is, yeah. Yeah. She's the dinosaur expert along with... uh... Sam Neill. Yeah. So Sterner Herondo, therefore, is not... Well, we're replacing Eric um, with with another letter in each case. Yeah, you've got got the principle. Um, So Sterner Herondo is not a... That looks like a Latin name for a fern, but it's not. No, no. Um... It's staring you in the face, actually. Um, if you look a little closer. Stern. Can... Stern. No. It's a turn. It is a turn. Yeah. Turn. <laughs> it's the right. Latin name for the common turn. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Common to you. So, I'm sure uh, they're all very special. Yes. You replace Eric. If you replace Eric from Eric and Ern with a C, you get CERN. If you replace him with a T, you get turn uh, if you replace him with a d you get laura dern who played dr ellie sattler in jurassic park and if you pl- replace him with a k you get jerome kern uh, the composer of showboat you did pretty well there but i think i have to dock you one point for for stumbling on the turn i had to push you along there uh, so that's five points to you midlands So, Adele and Stuart, it's time for a music clue. Listen to this and try and decide how this music would embody time in Cambridge and a Spanish mapmaker's Gulf Coast discovery. And on this bed that lie in the night His wound is bleeding day and night So um, what I'm searching for is how that music embodies time in Cambridge and a Spanish map maker's Gulf Coast discovery. The music, I think, is the late Jeff Buckley's version of the Corpus Christi Carol, which is Benjamin Britten? It, it is, yes. It's yes. Benjamin Britten's so arrangement. It's a... That takes you immediately to one of the most beautiful things in Cambridge, the Corpus Christi clock, the chronophage, which has this magnificent... Just, ex- locust just explain, creature. yeah. Why is it there is, a, there is a gigantic, round, beautiful thing in Cambridge called the Corpus Christi clock, the chronophage. And it's called the chronophage because it's a locust sort of eating time. Mm. And it goes ticking round and you can actually see it eating, gobbling up the seconds. It's most beautiful. How it ties up with a Spanish matchmaker... Ma- no. <laughs> Excuse me, that was a Freudian <laughs> slip. Map maker... Well, and a Gulf Coast discovery, nothing to do with Columbus. No, no, no I was wondering no, that. No. So this is a place. I'm assuming this may be a place called Corpus Christi or Body of Christ. It is a place, um, yeah. an island. Yeah. I would um, guess. No, 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 nope. Corpus- no. Yes, that's right. Corpus Christi is a is is it one of the is it the largest towns or the capital of an island uh, no, it, no. It, it's a port city a port in, city yeah in texas um, you course. can't tell me who discovered it um just to gild the lily um 
I don't think you're going to be able to answer this. No. It's Alonso Alvarez de Pineda, no. uh, first European to arrive there. Why did he call it uh, Corpus Christi? That was the name of his home church back nope. in... No, no. Nope. 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 He took communion there when he got there? <laughs> That's the day he arrived. It was the feast day of Corpus oh, Christi in okay. 1519. Okay. So you started well there. Um, <laughs> you, you immediately got that it was the Corpus Christi carol and you immediately got the, the connection to the Corpus clock in Cambridge. Uh, you struggled a little with Corpus Christi in, in Texas. Four points to you, North of England. Uh, so, Rosalind and Stephen, this very devious idea comes from a listener, Martin Metcalf in Leamington Spa. How could the following provide you with a tonic? The origin of a famous French female visionary, the works of Monsieur Fedeau, a mass equal to 1.989 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms, Camellia sinensis and a head-slapping exclamation entered into the OED in 2001. How could the following provide you with a tonic? The origin of a famous French female visionary, the works of Monsieur Fedeau, a mass equal to 1.989 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms, Camellia sinensis and a head-slapping exclamation entered into the OED in 2001. We, we think we're going to start at the end uh, and the beginning uh, in the hope that then the middle will become clear. So th the head slapping exclamation uh, we think is that that uh, frequently uttered by Homer Simpson when pretty much anything in the world confuses or surprises him, yeah. uh, which is do do. Yeah, um, you've got the right I, one. I believe correctly spelled D apostrophe O H exclamation mark. But um, do, but yeah. phonically, the sound do is also the tonic in music. It's the keynote, uh, as in do a deer, a female deer. Um, uh, so uh, the, the, whatever key you're in in the tonic for solfa system, do is where the key starts. So that is your tonic. So we're hoping that therefore the other four parts of this are all variations on do spelled differently. Da hope <laughs> springs eternal in springs in eternal. round Britain quiz doesn't it? So often crushed. Uh, okay. So, so the works of Monsieur Fado, uh, he was a famous farceur. He was. And uh, origin of the famous French visionary. We thought. Well, we'd... well, let's take it one at a time. So, so if if we're not looking for other does, then his works would just be described as farces. Yes, or farce. Farce. Mm. So they are fars. Okay, so we are looking for does, rays, mes, fos, fars, and sos, and so on. Okay. You, you've got the principle, yeah. And if and you were again, if you're going to get Joan two... of Arc came from don re me, do re me. Yeah, very good. Uh, okay. Um, the the mass has got a somewhat. <laughs> we're we're sw switching around things like the cloaca maxima and the planet Pluto. Uh, well, you've got your answer. You just have to find a way to sort of... Is that one sol? Is that a, a, a unit sol, of measure? It's the sun. It's not, it's not a sol. Oh. If you can work out what Camellia sinensis is, that will help you a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure you consume it every day. Tea. That's tea. Yes. It's a drink with jam and bread, but it's also <laughs> Camellia sinensis. Very good. Um, so you've got everything, and if you fit what's missing into the gap you've got oh so because Dor doremi was the origin okay so then far okay so then so is the mass no la well you've got doremi solar it's a solar it's okay it's it, one solar it is one solar presumably the, named because it's the mass notionally the mass of the sun notionally the mass of the Even sun though so it's a sort of really benchmark tell. measure for the masses of stars. It's like whales. Yeah. It's a benchmark <laughs> measure yeah. of magnitude. Yeah. So okay. look, just... Camellia sinensis is T and, and the head-slapping exclamation yeah. is dose. So, just, so we have an entire scale. Just run through it in sequence so, for so, me. So you, you, why would the following provide you with a tonic? The origin of the famous French vi female visionary is... Doremi. Doremi, the, the town of Doremi. Yeah. The works stay. of Monsieur Fedeau are false. false. A mass equal to 1.989 times is 10 the to the 30 solar. is the solar. Camellia sinensis is T. T. And a head slapping exclamation is do. 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 So we get <laughs> do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. Yeah. Yes. 
I have to dock you a couple of points there because you struggled in the middle a little bit. Uh, I think we can give you four for that, Midlands. Uh, North of England, you're, uh, you're, I don't think you can lose from this position, but uh, you're playing for pride now. What can you do with this question? If Manchester provided you with a conversation between, say, the Queen and Prince Charles, Sheffield would send Miller Potty, and Kane and Smith would be in Glasgow, what would drive you to Hull? If Manchester provided you with a conversation between, say, the Queen and Prince Charles, Sheffield would send Miller Potty, and Kane and Smith would be in Glasgow, what would drive you to Hull? Kane and Smith leapt out. They both being citizens. Citizen Kane, Orson Welles, and Citizen Smith, Robert Lindsay. Um, yeah. So no, that's, that's the theatre in Glasgow. Very good. The citizens. Um, the yep. So in Manchester, uh, the beautiful royal exchange between yeah. the Queen and Prince Charles. The Queen Charles. and Prince Charles could have a royal exchange. They could. Yes. Sheffield. Miller's Crucible being a pot, a crucible being a kind of pot, the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield after Arthur Miller's played the Crucible. Yeah, there's another reason the word pot is there. I don't know where. Oh, and he... pot as in snooker. It's where the World Snooker Championships are held. <laughs> exactly, that's. Uh... And so what would drive you to Hull would be a truck, as in the Hull as truck in John company. Godfrey's, so they're all theatres. John Godfrey's Hull Truck Company. Yeah. They are all theatres, yeah. yeah. Um, beautifully done. Six points to you. Which brings proceedings to a close for today. And I can tell you that the winners are North of England with 22 points, pipping the Midlands on 15. Well, not exactly pipping, defeating them soundly. Uh, Anyway, very well done to both teams. It means that at the halfway stage, Wales have won two. Scotland have won one and lost one. As have the South of England, Northern Ireland and the North of England. And very unusually, the Midlands are at the bottom of the table with two losses. Next week, it's Wales against Scotland in the first of the return or uh, revenge matches, which make up the second half of the series. Until then, you can be thinking about this question, which is also on our web page. There are no prizes, so no need to write for us. It's just for fun. What does Melrose Abbey have in common with the Church of the Holy Cross in Warsaw and Stinsford in Dorset? What does Melrose Abbey have in common with the Church of the Holy Cross in Warsaw and Stinsford in Dorset? I'll give you the solution next time. Till then, goodbye.